Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we are going to be planting a new selection of brand new introductions of perennials. Uh, vast majority of these are from proven winners that will be available on the market next year in 2025. We are standing here, of course, in the backyard and I have a flower bed that desperately needs um, some attention and some dressing up why not go ahead and throw in some gorgeous new perennials that love the hot sun and that should absolutely thrive here in my North Carolina zone 8a uh, climate with my heavy red clay thick soil. Just to give you a little perspective of the space that I'm talking about, of course, we are here at the um, just off the back patio in the grass here, of course, the steps from the drive, uh, excuse me, not the driveway, from the backyard up to the patio over there. This is the area that we're looking at right here. Of course, I've got my faithful friend and with her giant stick, but we are going to be basically filling in this whole flower bed with a lovely selection of perennials. What is here right now, just to kind of give you an idea, uh, right behind Brenna, there are two phenomenal lavenders. One is doing quite nicely. One basically, she's, she's on the struggle bus for sure, my friends. Um, like half the plant had died. I just cut it back. We are growing phenomenal lavender. Uh, I don't have any ready. So if this does not flush out, then I'm gonna take her out and replace her because I do love this lavender. It works so well in our thick clay soil in our hot humid weather so phenomenal lavender is wonderful then back here really the only other true plant that i have in here is scentlandia you were with me just the other day when i removed three scentlandia from the flower bed i don't know a couple hundred 100 feet away from me and because they were just going crazy this bed is not on irrigation therefore the scentlandia is much more controlled it still sends out a couple of little runners but i'm able to control it so i am leaving them here because it gives me nice height up against uh, this like the deck right so they are staying they have been trimmed back and they are starting to flush out some new leaf buds and then the nice big if we have time today we'll go ahead and trim the tea olive this is a sweet osmanthus uh, two winters ago it took a big hit in that arctic blast completely defoliated last year i did not get it trimmed up i need to do that you can see um, probably up there at the top that there are some thin branches that need to be cleaned up it just needs to get a nice overall shape if we have time to do that i will do that because i definitely have to get the ladder for that one and then i have three peonies in here that are right here this is the one that's the most advanced is the ito julia rose definitely gets the most sun so she is the most advanced right now this is what I'm working with. I'm working within this bed and trying to just fill in and give me loads of beautiful color throughout. Really, I'm thinking three seasons. I'm thinking spring, summer, and fall. Winter time, we never see this flower bed because it is extremely rare that we come back in this side of the yard during the winter. So I'm not so worried about winter interest, spring, summer, fall, that is what we are going for. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set the camera up and I'm gonna show you all of these beautiful plants and I'm gonna go plant by plant and tell you all the specs about them because everything in the back of Johnny is brand new. Like I said, will be introduced, come available on the market in 2025, except for one. There in the very back, we have some opening act ultra pink phlox that I love and adore. We're gonna add that in, but all those other plants, y'all, brand new on the market, test plants. So let me get everything set up and I'm gonna tell you all about them. My friends, it is time to talk plants. I'm just gonna say this one more time, just because I know people are gonna be asking for it. Uh, as far as I know, according to the website, these are not available on the market now. Uh, we have an amazing relationship with our friends at Walters Gardens uh, that is the home to the Proven Winter Perennials. So if you can't get a Proven Winter's Perennials, it originates back to Walters Gardens. They are so very kind and send us gorgeous plants to trial at the beginning of the season and then throughout the year. 
you were with me when we potted these up, oh gosh, maybe that was like two months ago, six weeks ago. And so um, they sent them to me that they're gonna be on the market, right? But they, I want to see how they perform here in our North Carolina Zone 8A climate. So just, if you are interested, just make a note in your gardening journal of you know plants to buy in the future or something to keep you know your eye on. As we progress through the season, throughout the year, I will come back with you and give you updates on them. And I will give you complete transparency because you know I share my successes and my messes. There's no bad plant, there is bad plant placement, or there could just be a plant that doesn't do well here in the South. So that is my job, is to figure out how those plants perform so then I can tell you um, and give you great gardening advice from one friend to the next. Some of these most, well, some of these are in quarts and then some of these are in gallons. It's simply just the way that we potted them up. Okay, so first here we have is the, a new salvia. This is Living Large Big Sky. And just from looking at the plant itself, like look how big those leaves are. So you can see that this is going to be more of a supersized salvia, if you will. Um, it is going to be a little bit of a later bloomer than other salvias, which for me is fine because that way, if you have salvias in your garden, it just extends your bloom season. So that's great. And then of course it does the large uh, violet blue flowers. Now this is gonna be hardy in zones three to eight. So see, I'm an 8A, I'm kind of pushing it. Let's see how it does in the hot afternoon sun here in my garden. It's going to get some height to it, 28 to 32 inches tall. That is going to be with the blooms and basically the same width on that. So it is going to be a nice big salvia, as its name suggests, and going to give you um, just really nice structure in your garden with those big violet blue flowers. Now, like with most perennial salvia, after it finishes blooming, if you give it a good haircut, really shear it back, then it's gonna reflush and you may get another great bloom in the fall. It's not gonna be like your spring display. Most of those perennial salvias are not, but you'll get some you know, flower power back. So for the most part, I have five of everything of these plants because they send them to me in increments of five. So excited about the living large. Another one that's gonna be really sweet. This is a whole new series. And I grabbed this particular one simply because of the color. Coreopsis. Coreopsis is known for being like a drought, once it's established, a drought tolerant, easy, low fuss perennial. The new series is called Designer Threads, and then I believe there's four colors in this series. The color that works best for this color palette here is Heartstrings. Heartstrings is going to be more of a peachy raspberry red in the center, and then on the tips of the outside of the leaf petals, the flower petals rather, it is going to be white, but it is a very um, nice thread leaf like Coreopsis, meaning that the foliage on it is very dissected. It is completely different texture wise. Let's see if the camera will pick this up. Completely different texture wise than the salvia. So that's what we want, right? In the garden, we want different colors. We want different heights. We want different textures going to be really fun. It's got already has some buds on it. Now this has been in the greenhouse, so this is a little bit advanced. They all are, but the uh, designer threads is going to be hardy in zones five to nine. So a little bit more heat tolerant for me. It is going to be basically 22, um, 18 to 20 inches tall and 22 feet, 22 feet. Now that would be a Coreopsis now, wouldn't it? I mean, that would be, that could come out living large. That would be one, 22 inches wide. So we've got a couple of these that we're going to put in there as well. I like the Coreopsis, especially this kind, because it brings a very light, airy um, texture to the garden. And with the height, those flowers are gonna move a little bit where your salvia is gonna be a little bit more erect and tighter. Then you've got some movement from the Coreopsis gonna be great um let's see where do we go where are we going next where are we going next my friends um oh baptisia i am a huge fan of baptisia if you have been around me for any length of time that you know this um i have got two of them in here because baptisia you know it is it's a it's a larger perennial right and so unless you've got some nice big like a big huge bed um, maybe you only have one maybe you have two on two corners of the flower bed this is the Decadence Vanilla Cream 
two. Now there's already a vanilla cream within the Baptiste Mar um, line with proven winners, but this is the improved version. So the way that they improved it is that it's going to bloom earlier and a little bit longer than the original. It still has that nice kind of compact habit to it, if you've never grown Baptisia before, it is a great, easy perennial. It is hardy in zones four to nine, so very adaptable. Depending on the variety, the cultivar is going to depend on um, your height. So this one will get 42 inches tall. I mean, that's almost four feet, that, three and a half feet. That's, that's a pretty good size right there. Um, but it has a vase-like habit, meaning that the bottom of the plant is more narrow and then it comes up and spreads out. Again, in the greenhouse we're a little bit advanced here but you can see that it already has um, some buds on it now this of course is when you have your first year baptisia plant they're a little thin right so this is a little thin it's okay you put it in the ground these are extremely long lived perennials and they will fill in in mass with tons of these shoots that come up beautiful flowers in that spring for me, it is a, it's a kind of a mid-spring bloomer. And then after that, you've got a really nice kind of the blue-gray foliage on it. Makes great backdrop in the back of the flower bed. Will be lovely for these other flowering perennials in here. Um, the only thing that I would caution you about with Baptisia, this will be the same thing with this vanilla cream too, is that Baptisia have very long and very deep tap roots. So they can transplant uh, it can be hard to transplant them because if you don't get that tap root and you don't get enough of the root system, then when you move it, you could kill it. So I tell people, think about it really hard where you want this and you're going to plant for size because they get rather big. You're going to space them three feet apart and trust me, they will get that big in a couple of years. So we've got two of those. Another fun perennial that I'm really excited to try is a new allium. I think a lot of us are very familiar with serendipity allium from Proven Winners, um, and it is a great plant. I have it in the garden and I love it. This is new. This is allium bobblehead. Now, bobblehead has all the same characteristics that we love about serendipity, right? It is an allium, so therefore it is going to be more deer resistant, more rabbit resistant. Alliums are simply onions, ornamental onions in your garden. The difference between this and serendipity is going to be the size. This is going to be a larger plant. It is going to be 30 to 32 inches tall, which is, I would say, pretty significantly taller than serendipity. And then your bloom color is going to be different. Serendipity has a really rich, rich purple. Bobblehead is going to be a lighter lavender color. So it's going to be a nice color difference in the garden. You absolutely could have them both in the same flower bed and it would be stunning. Now, bobblehead, of course, is going to be cardian zones four to eight. Spacing wise is basically about like 20 to 24 inches. Going to get nice and big. Alliums, of course, give us those really fun heads, the flower heads that are like balls, right? And the pollinators absolutely love them. This is a really great plant um, that is easy to grow basically in any soil. It does need the full sun. All of these plants that I didn't say are full sun plants. This flower bed absolutely bakes and fries, so it is most definitely going to be a full sun flower bed. If you're more of a shade person, don't worry, I've got plenty of Proven Winners uh, shade plants that we're going to put in, like the chicken coop gardens and other gardens. That will just be another video. So if you're a shade person, just, just hold your horses. I got you covered for sure. And um, yeah, I love the blue-green foliage because that's really going to be neat. And it's kind of hard to tell with this one because it's a new plant, but they'll actually kind of twist a little bit. So you're going to get some texture difference within this plant. I believe these are the new ones from Proven Winners. We've also got some originals from Walter's Gardens that we're going to put in here. And then I was wrong. It wasn't just one plant that is has been on the market. I actually have two. I forgot about, um, I don't know why I forgot about it, but um, the Russian Sage, the Denim and Lace. So Denim and Lace 
is really a great Russian sage. It's been on the market for a long time. It is a drought tolerant, full sun perennial um, that just thrives in the right conditions. For me, with clay soil that holds onto water, I wanna put it in an area that drains really well and doesn't have a ton of water being put on it. So if you have irrigation in your flower beds, like I have this up at the berm, there is very little irrigation near it. There is some that will get the soil within the vicinity moist, but it's not on top of here. This is not a heavy drinker. It prefers it much more dry, much more arid. This is gonna be great because it gives me um, later color in the season. Also, we'll have that nice blue-green foliage to it, more upright, very um, a tight habit on it, bushier, shall we say, because it'll go out to 28, 28 to 32 inches tall, and of course, it's hardy in zones of four to nine. You will notice that I have already trimmed it. Now, this overwintered outside all winter. So all the growth that you see right here is completely natural. This is what my Russian sage looks like this time of year. The old stalks that were um, you know, dead, I just went ahead and cut them back. So I'm gonna cut all that back until I see my nice pretty new green growth right there. And then there you go. So we've got three of those. And then like I said, I have a phlox. I love this phlox. Opening act is a series uh, that is what I consider like a, um, a mid-season bloomer for flocks, right? So you have in the early spring, you have your woodland flocks. That's the flocks, that's like the ground cover. Um, one of the very first perennials that you will see blooming, um, that is that. This is a, um, a flocks that is that between the woodland flocks and the paniculata flocks, like your luminary series, your ultraviolet, right? Your um, opalescence. This is in the middle. So this is a great kind of stand in between those two. Again, very like thread like foliage on it and absolutely stunning flowers. This thing performed insanely well in the garden last year. I have it at the berm, long, long bloomer. Get some height at that 22 to 28. So it's not super tall like my Baptisia. It's kind of that way in the middle. So be in the middle of this border, gorgeous pink. I mean, it is called ultra pink for a reason. And just, I love it because it's very upright, airy, but yet tight. It's just a whole different kind of dimension. Hardy in zones four to eight. Again, even though I'm an 8A, I have tons of them at the top of the berm, which is just absolutely bakes. They did really well. And yeah, so early blooming flocks. I mean, you can't beat that for sure. So those are all of the proven winter perennials that we are putting in here. Like I said, uh, Walters sent us a couple of their introductions. So Walters, of course, grows the proven winter perennials, and then they have their own perennials that they uh, grow and develop. Now, I'm just gonna tell you, the two that I have are in proven winter cups. They are not proven winters. When I was potting up, I did not have any black pots. I only had the proven winter pots. So I just slapped them in there. These are not proven winners, these two. These are come from Walters. The first one is going to be a Veronica. And already we are getting some nice height on this plant. Again, it was in the greenhouse. We're a little advanced, but look at the root system, y'all. I mean, this is going to be a very happy, very easy plant to grow in the garden, I believe. This is called Da Vinci Delight. And it is a Veronica, full sun to part shade. This is definitely gonna be the full sun. It is hardy in zones four to eight. It is an early to late summer bloomer. You can pair it with like your Shasta daisies and your daylilies and your Monardas, right? It is gonna be 18 to 20 inches tall and nice and wide, about, you know, two feet, two and a half feet wide, and it just has those nice soft lilac purple flowers nice long blooming perennial and it has really nice mildew resistance to it as this grows and develops you know with veronica's when you have those older blooms if you want to go in there and clean up the plant deadhead a little bit of course that's going to help the plant puts more energy back in the roots to produce more flowers so the, the da vinci delight is going to be uh, a nice uh, addition to this garden if you can't think if you haven't picked up on it yet we're going to go in those like purples and pinks uh, rosy kind of colors for sure in the garden garden. Now this one, y'all, this one is going to be really fun. I think I'm either going to love it or I'm just being honest, I'm going to hate it. But we're going to go for love, right? We're going to go for love until uh, the plant proves me otherwise. Again, this is not a proven winner. It's just in the cup. This is a liatris. And look already 
how happy, how vigorous this plant is. And look at those roots, right? You always think about perennials with those roots. Very happy root system for sure. This is called lavender glow sticks. Lavender glow sticks is a native uh, to North America. So uh, natives is the buzzword right now. So this definitely is a native plant. It uh, has really fun, beautiful foliage to it. It very much looks like a grass right now. And it will get four feet tall. Mm -hmm. It will get large. It is going to be big with those, of course, beautiful liatris is known for those really long spikes of flowers that just keep, they just keep growing and they just keep blooming all the way up the stalk. This is hardy in zones three to nine. And it definitely is taller than it is wider. So it's very columnar in its habit. It's only going to be, it's only going to be one and a half to two feet tall compared though to four, I mean, one and a half to two feet wide compared to four feet tall. So this is going to be a big plant and it blooms early summer to late summer. So it's gonna be a long bloomer. Um, it is a great plant for pollinators. So if you're looking to attract your pollinators, heat and drought tolerant. And like I said, it is a seed strain of the North American native perennial. So there you go. This is gonna be fun. What I do have is all of my supplies. I, of course, have my power planter auger because uh, this is that thick red clay soil. So I'm using my power planter auger with the Jenny's Edition auger because it is perfect for these quart size containers and even the gallon containers. So I have that. I have biotone. I never plant plants without my biotone. So I've got biotone. A little different, we are going to actually amend this soil because it is thick red clay. We're going to amend each hole with some of Daddy Pete's. Uh, this is called the Soil Enhancer and Soil Enhancer is strictly pine bark fines. It is aged pine bark fines. So when you think of a pine tree and the bark, they in the lumber mills, wherever they're processing trees, the pine trees, they take the bark they chop it up, it is aged, and then they bag it. This provides great organic material for your yard uh, and your garden. It provides aeration, which is what we need in our clay soil. So this is a great to bring that organic matter and um, aeration amendment to thick, compacted clay soil. So we're gonna do that. And then once the plants are planted, I'm gonna come back and just top dress each plant with land and sea. Um, if you're look, thinking about it from an economic perspective, of course, the Daddy Pete bag is bigger and it is, you get more bang for your buck with the Daddy Pete, right? So you're gonna be more um, financially savvy, shall we say, when you're using the soil enhancer actually in the soil and then we're going to come back and just top dress with your land and see. So that is what we're going to do. First of all, I have to figure out exactly the placement for these plants because I have a general idea, but I really don't know where exactly they're going to go. So we're going to do a little designing. I am going to lose this sweater because it was in the 30s this morning and now we're, we're creeping up to 70 and this is a hot spot in the garden. So we're just going to have a little design fun and then I'm going to get everybody planted and then I'll meet you back here in just a minute. Show you we're going to see what Jenny comes up with.
My friends, today's project is complete. And oh my goodness, it looks fantastic. And uh, I can just envision it, how it's going to look this spring and summer and fall. As you probably noticed, uh, Mimi came down and helped me. She has been my uh, gardening partner in crime this week. She helped me weed the dahlia beds. And so we've been weeding every afternoon because that is my number one job right here in the spring is weeds, weeds, weeds. I mean, they come up all the time everywhere. Um, so we're trying to stay on top of it. So she was like, hey, do you want to weed today? And I was like, well, actually, I'm planting perennials. Want to come down? And so she was like, be down in a minute. So she came down and helped. And man, it was a lifesaver. Anytime you can get an extra pair of hands, it is <laughs> a very good thing. And there were a lot of plants. I think they were multiplying on me in here. So let's talk about the design and everything that we did. Now, before I did start planting, I did go in there and weed. Um, weeds were not that bad because we have um, a nice thick layer of mulch in here, so that worked quite nicely. All right, talk about the design. Here, right along the, uh, the steps, and, and let me just say that these steps are not heavily used. I mean, they, it's not. We do not come down this way a lot. Um, so this is, just keep that in mind. All right. So we have the five uh, Coreopsis right there. Of course, remember that is the heartstrings. They're gonna be nice and low. I, my plan is, is that they're gonna fill in and look like one massive plant and have just this whole nice little ribbon right there. It's low and then we kind of go up a little high. The phenomenal, of course, will get much bigger, right? And then your Baptisia is a nice focal point right there with the Scentlandia behind it. So I, I know that we have kind of a height right here, so low to high. And then when we come around, we have, uh, we'll start in the back. I did only three of the Liatris. I have five. And so three is going to be plenty, being four feet tall. Put them in the very back so that because obviously they are my tallest and if they get floppy which i suspect they might just even because of the wind if i need to kind of put some string around them i can use that with the wall right there so they're in the very back such beautiful plants and then i like to do fun little groupings right so we have the three opening act phloxes right here again they are going to fill in i went short on my minimum spacing um, they're a little bit closer than probably what they what it's called for that way it'd be a nice big mass clump together same thing with the bobblehead the bobbleheads i think the spacing was like two feet we're getting close but I wanted to have a nice big huge patch of them, especially when they're you know in bloom and nice and full. There you go. A fun little design trick uh, that I like to do. So I have one of the salvias here, and then I have a group of four over here. Um, just kind of breaking it up a little bit. And also the reason that there is a hole, a little door, in the wall right there is because our propane tank is under there and so we need the when the gas guys come they fill it up and i've got to leave a pathway for them so it's not a super noticeable path but especially when the plants get big but there is a nice access point for the guys to get in and when they come they typically come from the front of the house so they'll come here and see it and then it has that little bit of curve and they can get in right there but there is uh, the four salvias right there, nice and big. The cute little butterflies, these are the rusty bear butterflies. Sweet uh, mother-daughter team, uh, they have an Etsy shop, the Rusty Sparrow, and I will put a link in the video description. They're the same ones that I have my butterflies on the garden shed wall, right? So I did that 15 butterflies on the side of the wall. Uh, you sweet people ordered so many butterflies from them and I guess you were telling them that you saw the video, my video and so they contacted me and were like, hey, we would love to send you some other, other of our products. And I was like, yes, please, I would love it. So they sent me a whole box full of sweet little plant steaks and some more different kind of butterflies. So I brought three of the butterflies on the steaks down here and they come like this they were not as rusted but they have been sitting out but they come with the stakes there's actually two stakes that they um, screw on together if you can see there's a little swell right there 
So they screw on and then outside they will turn rusty, which is just a really fun, <laughs> it's a really fun little uh, unique element to the garden. And because they're tall, like when the wind is blowing, they move. And so I just think it's cute. Obviously you can just put them anywhere you want to, but I just put those three there for now. We have the other opening act right here. And then we did the three Veronica's right here. I only did three. Um, so that we have three there. We have the other Baptisia. And then I have the Russian sage intermingled here among the peonies. My thought is, Peonies will shine in the spring, early summer. You'll have that beautiful foliage. The Russian sage will just be popping out of the ground. And then for the rest of the summer, you'll have beautiful foliage from the peonies while the Russian sage has its foliage and its um, flowers as well. So that is pretty much the bed, all the plants that we put in there. And then we tackled poor tea olive. So on this side, because this is where the wind hits, you see all that in there. Now, it is not, what you see in there is not dead. We did cut out, I think there was maybe one dead limb we cut out. But like right here, you can see that it's bare, but look, it's popping out new growth. And then this guy is, is alive too because it has stems that have new growth on it as well. The tea olives, sweet osmanthus, this does not produce like the fruit olive. Um, so you can call it a tea olive, a sweet olive. Um, it is a sweet osmanthus, but they smell divine. They're blooming right now. Um, that was the one thing that I hated to do was trim it now because it has flowers on it and it smells divine. It is the description that I could best describe would be an orangey honeysuckle jasmine fragrance to it is intoxicating and i love it side note this is a freebie um ben and aaron napier who have the show hometown makeover on discovery hgtv discovery anyway um you know who i'm talking about they're in laurel mississippi so they have their own company laurel mercantile she has a candle it is called the laurel candle and there's a room spray they have come out with all this other fragrance but it's the laurel is the name it is the sweet olive fragrance it is divine i love that candle the room spray you name it it smells great so if you've been looking for if you know this shrub and you love the fragrance i would encourage you to go check it out I'll, if i remember i will try to put a link in there um I get absolutely nothing from it. I, this is from one friend to another, just passing along. If you love that fragrance, it is the best. And it is, she has the best candles ever, hands down, best candles. Um, but yeah, I digress. So the whole area is coming along quite nicely. We're gonna get lots of rain. The soil was nice and moist. So the plants are kind of freaking out just a little bit because it is pretty warm right there. I will see how they look in the morning. If they have recovered and they're nice and perky, then I will leave them alone because again, we're gonna be getting tons of rain. Um, but that's just a great kind of tip. They were nice and well watered when I put them in. I see like there's a there's a phlox over here that's looking a little limpy. If it's limpy in the morning, then I'll shoot it with water. If it's nice and perky, then it will be fine. Um, but that's just something to keep kind of in mind. Okay, my friends, so uh, lots going on here. The nursery's been open today, had amazing customers. Jackson was running back and forth. I don't know if the camera caught it. He was mulching the phantom hydrangea bed back there for me behind the dahlia garden. Um, so it is done. Speaking of dahlia garden, Let's just bop over there real quick, shall we? Um, we'll go see it right quick because Mimi and I spent, I spent one afternoon and then Mimi helped me for two afternoons. We did a bed and afternoon weeding it. I showed it to you when we did the garden tour. Um, so we got it weeded and then we got it mulched. Jackson was bringing the tractor back and forth with the Creekside blend. This is a mulch, uh, pine bark compost blend and y'all look and then yep he finished up the hydrangea bed and he even fertilized it for me look at that don't doesn't that just look so much better oh my gosh it looks like a real gardener lives here <laughs> showing the garden some love so the dahlia beds looking great uh chandler who takes care of our grass he's going to help um keep my sides maintained as far as like if he can't get it with the weed i mean the mower then he'll come in with the weed eater and keep this maintained for me. And then Jackson got the phantom bed done. Oh, 
and fertilized. I said, just take some rose tone and sling it, buddy. He was like, okay, mama. So he got it. I'm telling you, <laughs> it pays to have a, a 14 year old son who loves to work outside and uh, drive all the equipment. So it's great. I feel like things are coming along because remember, we're having a wedding here in uh, two months. So the reception will be happening right back here. So this has all got to look as primo as possible. And then of course we had the signature event one month after that, so the end of June. So we're gonna have a lot of eyes on this area up close and personal. I want it to look its best. All right, my friends, it's been a great spring day here in the garden. Uh, and as always, we hope you found this fun, informative, inspirational. Y'all have an amazing day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.